Hey guys, I'm Nichello with Sub-07, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. Last time, I nearly lost my sanity, but we cleared the Safari Zone and got ourselves... Big Tex, the Tauros. Because I'm an insane person. And today, we're going to be heading eastward. To Route 15, I think it is. But first, there is a couple things I want to discuss real fast. We picked up the Good Rod well here in Fuchsia, but we didn't really cover what we can use it to get. So... Might as well check out the pond here real fast. I mentioned this in a couple, a couple episodes ago, but we didn't actually, you know, bother to look inside of it. Let's take a look. Because with the good rod, you don't have to just catch Magikarp anymore. You can also catch... Nothing. It's great. Yay. <laughs> but no, uh, there's at least two Pokemon here specifically that we can get through the good rod. And there are a couple more that we can get... Uh, in the routes eastward once we get two patches of water. Please find something. There we go. I swear to God. There we go! That's one of them. Goldeen is one of the Pokemon that you can find out here in the pond, and it's not that good. It's a pure water type, and it's physical attack oriented when it evolves into Sea King. Fuck yeah, Seeking, but at the same time, don't really bother with this thing. It's not that good of a Pokemon. It learns some alright moves that actually do benefit its high physical attack, but you really don't need to worry about it. It's passable. You can skip over this one. Alternatively, though, you can also encounter Poliwag here. Poliwag is a much different Pokemon. It's a three-stage evolution versus Goldeen's 2, and it becomes Poliwrath with a Water Stone being more physically defensive and special defensive, I guess balanced defensive Pokemon, and being water fighting. You sadly can't access its Johto evolution, which is Politoed, but... Eh. Poliwrath is a decent enough Pokemon, learns a lot of moves, and water fighting has some cool moves you can mess with. But over here, now that we're in Route 15, we got another research dude. Hi! Remember me? No! Stop acting like I don't remember any of you guys. <laughs> Do I have complete data on 50 species? We will get... The experience share. Not even close, dude. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Okay. To be completely clear up front, the experience share is one of the best items in the game. It lets you transfer experience to a Pokemon without even having to put them into battle. If they go into battle, they get extra experience from it. It's the best thing you have if you want to catch a Pokemon up to the rest of your team and they're too far behind in levels to really participate in main battles. Unfortunately... In this game, it's it's tied behind, it's tied locked behind getting a bunch of other Pokemon that you're probably never going to use. I mean, half the point of the series is to catch them all, but at the same time, eh. But anyways, now that we're out in Route 15, there is one new encounter as well out here. But it's a bit rare. It's not you. I'm sorry if I don't that. <laughs> the, one, the one encounter that I'm thinking of is actually, uh, Ditto! <laughs> Oddly enough, this... Thing. I'm not really sure what it is. I think it's supposed to be just a blob of DNA. It is not really a Pokemon you want to have on your team, per se, but it has a lot of utility in other avenues. Ditto is amazing for breeding, because it will always clone the opposite Pokemon to get you a perfect replica. So if you're bad at breeding and don't know how to really make, make it be the Pokemon you want, Ditto is fine for that. Ditto, not really a Pokemon that's necessary to have in battle. It only knows one move, Transform, where it will perfectly imitate the opposing Pokemon, but that's about it. You don't really need to have this thing as a main team member. It will slow you down. But there's fun things you can do with it. It also was ironically a Pokemon that was banned from competitive play for a while. At least at the very start of Pokemon, I believe. Due to being... What was it? There was, a, I believe, a glitch where if it was Ditto versus Ditto, you'd be stuck in an endless loop and the battle would never end. <laughs> Something like that. Ah, oh, great. I got poisoned. How dare you poison my bull? I just got this bull, and now you poison it? How rude of this random-ass plant. Thinking it looks like tough shit. Piece of shit. But yeah, this is mostly going to be the, the episode where we explore the eastern side of Fuchsia City, climbing up the routes that will lead us eventually back up to Lavender Town and uh, Vermil Vermilion. I raise Pokemon for protection because I live alone. That's unfortunate. Beauty Olivia. Oh, you got a Bulbasaur. I had one of those, now it's bigger. I also have a bowl now. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get way too much mileage into having a fucking bowl on my team. It's going to be great. 
Like it's five levels hot. It's five. It's about four levels lower than that thing. Look at that damage. Ow. Fucking poison. That's gonna be a real problem. Despite being a lot farther back, Tauros at least has high stats that can compensate for being lower level than the rest of the team. Plus it has stronger moves that it can use. And benefits from the same type of attack bonus with strength. Unfortunately, it's also going to die of poisoning if I leave it out, so let's just switch to something else. Uh, Senko. Snagger doesn't need to take all the spotlight. Nice try. Now, Senko is actually pretty close to the point where I want her to be before we'll evolve her. She has one more move I'm intending to learn before we change things up and get ourselves a Ninetales. Oh, come on! Bastard! Ugh. I hate it when they just resort to the poisoning strategy. It's always annoying. You're not cool! Get out of here. And that's that. This is also a really good spot to be using the Versus Seeker on, because there's just a lot of trainers in this route, so easy experience. I'm going to run back and heal real fast, because I don't want to deal with poison. Alright, back at it again once more. Now, you may think that it's tempting, given that the Future City Gym is right there. Why not challenge it right away? I don't recommend you do that. I recommend you go eastward for a bit to grind up some levels, because trust me, you're not ready for Koga's Gym. That gym is, uh... A bit higher level cap than you probably are right at this point in the game. Because I believe Koga himself, his team is high 30s to low 40s. It's pretty up there by comparison to what we've dealt with so far. Yeah, let's go, Big Tex. Yeah, that's good. No, that's not cool. Did so little damage on that one. Damn it. Why are you only using Supersonic? You've used it three turns in a row. What the hell? I've never seen someone so determined to bug me and make me confused in my life. I mean, I guess it makes sense he's a bug type, but still. All right, let's head this way. This is mostly just going to be a casual heading eastward and fighting trainers episode, so don't worry too much. But there's a couple things I guess we can pick up while we're here. There's a couple items and such. Coughing. That's not good. You're probably going to blow up. I'm calling it right now. You're going to either try and blow up or try and poison me. This is definitely the point in the game where a lot of the coughings you encounter just kind of blow up on reaction. So watch out. Okay, it didn't explode. I don't trust you. <laughs> I never did. Never used a wheezing before. Maybe one day I'll try them out. Now get out of here. Rhymer. Um, I guess Big Texan try and tackle that since it's more especially defense oriented. His high physical attack will work out wonders. Try this on for size. Mmm, tasty damage. No! Why? Why must you take away everything that I love? Eat horn. That works. Wheezing. Ooh. Are you going to explode? That's the real question now. <laughs> I'm just on edge because I know these things like to explode. I'm just wondering when it's going to happen because it's going to happen at some point. And since I don't really have a very defense-oriented team member aside from maybe Venusaur... I'm just kind of waiting for it. Oh, come on. So close. Tackle? Okay. If you want to waste a turn, go for it, buddy. You're dead. Level up for big techs. Nice. I'm trying to learn swag. Oh, God. Okay. So, swagger is a status move that... Greatly increases your opponent's attack at the cost of confusing them. I don't personally like using this move, but I believe it's always a turn one guaranteed hit from confusion, which will deal extra damage. I could be wrong on that, though. It's a bit of a nuisance of a move. 
But if you can, if you have a Pokemon that, say, recovers some confusion faster or is holding a berry for it, you can kind of use this to your advantage in double battles. I'm not going to bother with it, though. Yeah, stop learning. There we go. That can't be true. I mean, it could be. I don't know. I don't really use Swagger, so I'm not 100% on his facts. Why are there so many Venonats in here? Are you upset that I didn't pick you for my team? I'm sorry, I don't care for bug types. There's like three bug types that we consider seriously using for teams in Pokemon. What are they exactly? Well, you'll, you'll find out one day, maybe. <laughs> maybe if I ever do other Pokemon games. Because like, I'd, I'd totally love to do stuff like, say, Crystal Version, but that would require some uh, interesting developments on my end, because as someone who is currently working a full-time job, uh, not really something you can work with when you're supposed to be using a time-based game, especially when you need certain Pokemon to show up at certain parts of the day. I love Crystal Version, but that feature does not work well with my current uh, living situation. Speaking of uh, living situation, bird keepers. <laughs> what? What? What am I talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's just get back to work. Get this bird out of here. Luckily, Spearows are glass cannons, so they are no match for big techs. I don't think even Spearow is going to hold off too well against this. Let's see. You're higher level. Fury attack. That's yeah, not doing too much. Crit? No, oh, shouldn't have said anything. And that takes care of you. Let's go, Big Tex. I knew it! What'd you know? Winning, losing, it's insignificant under this huge sky. I mean, I guess if you want to be pessimistic about it. We do have a tree that we can cut down here real fast, though, so let's do that. I apparently went back to Route 14 that way first. Whoops. Over here, I believe there is a double battle couple. Yep. They're carrying some stuff that we haven't seen yet. And there's also this. TM18 Rain Dance. This is a weather move that will have rain falling for about five turns. And it increases water moves and weakens fire moves. Also making thunder hit 100% of the time. What is thunder? Uh, you'll see later. But just now we move up to Route 14. No new encounters here, just kind of shuffling around the encounter rate of some things we've already seen. And a lot of trainers. There's Route 13 over there. Also, no new encounters from the ground areas. They have TMs on sale to sell out in department stores. Oops. TMs are really rare, but many people have HMs. Or not many people have HMs, sorry. But yeah, we're mostly just going to be bullying bird keepers around here, because... That's kind of the majority of trainers here. Bird keepers and bikers. They don't really stand too much of a chance now that I have a raging bull on my team. And alongside everyone else like Nash. Okay, yep, you got a Firo. Let's see if we can take you out despite being... Uh, teetering on the edge of death. What? I don't understand why Firos have Pursuit. Like, I know Big Tex has it, because, but that's because I haven't gotten a move to get rid of it yet. Level up. Nice. Now that has a beefy offense and some good speed. Ah, oh, bummer. I think I got something that can heal you up. Because I remember buying Super Potions at least last time. It's been a bit since my last recording session. Uh, let's see. That's my rare candies. I got a couple of those, actually. Firestone, not time for that yet. Did I really not? I could have sworn that I did. Hmm. Eh, we got Hyper Potion. And this is around the point in the game where we're going to be finding Hyper Potions in Marts. Might as well use it. There we go. Much better. But yeah, if you need to raise up, say, a rock or electric type, by all means, use this place. What are you looking at? Uh, east. Nothing in particular, just east. Biker Jared. Coughing. 
After a while, I start to notice that all the bikers have like the exact same teams of just coughing, wheezings, and maybe grimers. And you go, guys, come on, get something else. Uh, physically defense, not a, nothing I can work with. Switch the Nash. Alright, Spark. Oh, come on, so close. Well, unfortunately for you, Smoke Screen does nothing because I have Shockwave. Eat this! Sucker. Level up for Nash. 31. Wonderful! Uh, you can stay out for a bit, actually, Nash. Might as well clear out the coughings. Now get out of here. Take care of that. Do you have anything else, please? No, you don't. God damn it. <sighs> gen 1 is the best gen. It's the most original and most unique gen. No, it's not. They use the same team compositions over and over again. I know every generation is guilty of this to some degree, but come on. Blaming past generations for the problems of the first generation does not solve anything. <laughs> really, I just blame the first generation. <laughs> There are a couple things that I noticed that are also a bit different than I remembered about Gen 1. Namely that a lot of the, like, more useful Pokémon are definitely more out of their way if you want to actually find them. Because we have Tauros, of course, which is hard to find. Volpix and Growlithe are pretty hard to locate in some spots. And the last member of our team, which I do have plans to get relatively soon, is still a ways off. I need something before we can get there. Uh, we got more grass for Route 13. Uh, I don't think there's anything hidden around here that we can grab, though. Just another Bell Sprout. Don't need ya. Sorry, bud. I'm just gonna stare at you angry, little like an angry bull, and then uh, run away. Why? I believe there is a hidden item over here, though. Yeah, PP up. This will increase the maximum power points on one of your moves, which can be nice if you have, like, a low PP move, like, say, uh, Extreme Speed. Can we walk past you? Yes, we can. <laughs> just kind of just casually avoiding all the trainers. <laughs> Route 12. Uh, I don't know if th this has any hidden items in it either. Let's cut down that tree. Once again, though, no new encounters, so don't worry about anything new here, at least in the grass. Venonat! Again. Again? Get out of here. No one needs a tiny gnat right now. Oh, don't waste my time with this, come on! At least it's not Gen 7 where this move actually is annoying. Poke. Dead. Not a big surprise. Let me guess, another- oh, okay, nope, it's Bellsprout, the other thing we've been encountering. <laughs> I swear Ditto is around here somewhere, but it's like a 5% encounter rate in most routes around here. I think except for 15, where it's a 15% chance, one of these routes is a 15%, otherwise it's 5. By well, looks of it, though, we got Fisherman. Forward! What's catching? You never know what you could catch. Uh, I mean, I kind of do. Well, actually, now that I think about it, uh, this is a route where fishing gives us new encounters, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. So, if I... Oh, God damn it. Why do fishers always have just Magikarp? You're at the point where they can beat Gyarados, bro! Just evolve it already! There's nothing sentimental about it, just evolve your damn fish! Anyways, uh, what I was trying to say before I got distracted by being upset at Magikarp for existing. Sorry, Magikarp. Uh, is I believe there is a couple new encounters we can get through fishing around here. We've technically been able to get these guys for a bit since we got the good rod, but 
We can encounter them now, so we'll cover them right now. There's two encounters we can get here through the good rod. First is Horsey. Horsey is not bad. Um, it evolves into Seedra relatively middle of the road length. It's not that good stats, though. It's kind of meant to be a special attacker, but you could do better. This thing got better in Generation 2 onwards when it got a third evolution, or second evolution, I guess, in the form of Kingdra, which is more balanced and has a lot of things it can cover. Kingdra is also part dragon, and dragon water is a great type that's really hard to deal with. But being pure water types, Seedra and Horsey just kind of blend in with the other water types of Gen 1. Alternatively, there is also Krabby. Krabby is a Pokemon that got better with time, I think. This thing is another pure water type, but it's extremely physically oriented, having high physical attack and defense. That sounds great, but then you remember it's a water type and it can't get any sort of benefit from its moves. In Gen 4 onwards, though, it got stuff like Crab Hammer, which greatly benefited that. So, if you want to use a Kingler or something, by all means, save it for a later gen, but give it a whirl if you want. I enjoy Kingler. What I don't enjoy, though, is this guy. Camper Justin. Nidoran. Congratulations, you have a horn. My horns are bigger. I just imagine being big tech being like a schoolyard bully, just like, fuck off, I'm a bull. You're really gonna fight me? Get out of here. You think you can horn attack me? I'm the bull. No one misses with the bull. Nidorino. Whoa, so scary. You got a slightly bigger horn now. I have two and they're still bigger. <laughs> I amuse myself too much, I swear. Oh, God damn it! This is what I get for playing the schoolyard bully. Oh, fuck. Double kick, that's a physical... That's a fighting type move. But luckily it's also double kick so it doesn't hurt that badly. Also been uh, replaying Pokemon Crystal as of late, and this, I think I, br I bring this up because Poison works a bit differently in that generation compared to Generation Three right here. Poison activates the turn, the, the moment that your Pokemon's turn is done. So say you do a move, then you get hurt by Poison, but then your opponent can still go if they're slower. Here it's always at the end of the turn when you're afflicted by Poison or Burn. We find an Iron, which increases our physical defense. Uh, suffering from Poison again. Do I have an antidote still? I think I might. Yes, I do. I got one left after this, so make it count. Thank you. Dodge the bird keeper, but over here is something of relevance. I'm the fishing guru's younger brother. I simply love fishing. I can't bear to go without. Tell me, do you like to fish? Why do you guys all say the same thing? But yes. Grand! I like your style. I think we can be friends. Take this and fish, young friend. But you're the younger brother. This is the last of the fishing rods, though. The super rod. Fishing is a way of life. It is like the finest poetry. From the seas to rivers, go out and land the big one, my friend. Now I have a request. If you catch a big Magikarp with that rod, I want to see it. As much as I love to fish, I also love seeing a gigantic Magikarp. That's a bit creepy, bro, I'm gonna be honest. But yeah, this guy does have a request for you specifically. If you get a large enough Magikarp and bring it to him, he'll give you his Super Potion. Not that worth it, honestly, but it's something. The Super Rod, though, is a pretty valuable item for us. Motherfucker, I forgot he was right here. Uh, but yeah, the Super Rod is, again, the third and final of the three fishing rods you can get in this game, and you can use it to get the rarest fish around here, and some really good Pokemon for either version of the game. Like, normally I say that the exclusives of Fire Red and Leaf Green can often be lopsided in favor of Fire Red. Here, though? No, they're both really good that you can get from fishing here. Picnicker Susie. He's got a Pidgey, oh boy. Even when, even when low on health, the bull sounds just angry all the time. Accurate. Maybe I should have just called it the bull, because that is accurate. It is a bull. It's like using Ursaring. You're gonna hit hard, why? Because you're a fucking bear. You don't mess with a bear. Unfortunately for this chick, she messed with the bull, so now she gets the horns. Yes, yes, you're sending out all your Pokemon thinking you have a chance against me, but no. <laughs> I'm sorry. You should have gone to Safari Zone when you had the chance, lady. Oh, this is cathartic after going through hell and back to get this thing on my team, honestly. But he's probably gonna die here at some point because someone's gonna use Quick Attack and be strong enough to kill him. Or not. 
Oh, come on! Well, extra experience. Even if you're slow enough, I think you'll still be good enough to be just murder him. Yeah. Oh, god damn it. Why did I say anything? Get out of here. Thank you. Oh, I lost. Sure did. Sorry, hon. But uh, we're going to take a quick run all the way back. Actually, what am I doing? How's this? I guess we can do that now, actually. Change of plans. Tauros, you've already gotten three levels in one episode. I think I know what we're going to do, because that roadblock has been sitting there for too long. Let's take care of it while we can. Ah, goddammit. My bird Pokemon wants to battle you. Whatever. Sebastian. Stop sending in birds. I also need to get Venusaur a move that isn't just grass or tackle. Because he could really go for a poison move like, say, Sludge Bomb. Well, so might as well cover your bases. Because if you're going to use one move of the same type for everything on a Pokemon, you're kind of leaving yourself open to a lot of things. Especially if you're running into something the type isn't good against. Eh, this isn't worth it. Let's, uh, switch out. To Nash. You dare slap me with those wings and make tornadoes? How dare you? I'm the- I'm the upside-down Pokeball. You can't scare me. Get out of here. 33 for Emperor. My Pidgeon Pidgeotto combo lost? Of course it did! What are you, stupid? Why Why would that work? But you know, we're gonna head back up here, because honestly, this is the only other Snorlax as a roadblock, and might as well clear the path of him real fast. Maybe store in the lead. Um, yeah, I think that's for the best. Let's do it. We've already caught one Snorlax, so I'm not really going to worry about trying to catch this one. Okay, good. I was worried for half a second. Given what my luck has been in this playthrough, I honestly was half expecting this to be a shiny. And then I just would have been upset. <laughs> but it's not so I can focus on killing it. Wow. Immediately? Okay. Never seen someone that determined to uh, go the fuck to sleep, but be my guest. If you're so happy to go to sleep, you can stay asleep. And I will happily murder your face hole. Cut that HP down. Don't you dare. How? No. No. Don't go back to sleep. What the fuck was that voice? I think it was supposed to be like fucking Christopher Walken, but I, I can't do a good Christopher Walken. No. I'm just getting started. That doesn't work. It's hard to tell what voices you can do, because in, in your head you think you sound a lot different than you actually do. Let's do some damage physically, because I know Snorlax is better special defense. Oh fuck! Well, we're actually going to see what Snore does. Yeah, it's the one. Mo it's one of only two moves you can do while actually asleep. The other being Sleep Talk, which will randomly do another move. Oh fuck off! Really? This is what it normally feels like fighting a Snorlax. I'm surprised the other one went so smoothly. This is how it normally goes.
Did you dare? Ugh! I could just run from it, but it's also experience I could be getting, so I'm not going to do that real fast. If I get sick of this, though, I might. Unfortunate for you, I'm very stubborn. So don't expect that to happen anytime soon. Oh fuck, not again. Wow, you didn't actually- oh fuck! I can use this, actually. If I put you back to sleep before you get to go back to sleep yourself, you don't get healed. Go to sleep! Just for the hell of it, I'll throw a ball, see what happens. This is pretty much the best condition for it to be asleep in. Eh, we'll try a great ball. Great balls, of course, are just better Pokeballs, better chance of catching. Not perfect, but better. Wow. Alright, just stubborn fucking... Colossus, jeez. Let's try two. Jesus, you really are just angry. Okay, so because I, I don't want to waste my time any much longer, and because he's also doing that, or she's also doing that, let's just get to the chase. No! Okay, that's fine. Whew. Just kill it. Just hit it and kill it. I was half worried it was going to miss. That takes care of that. Now when you defeat Snorlax, instead of catching it, he gave a huge yawn and returned to the mountains. <laughs> That's it. Like, it doesn't say what the mountains are. It just returned to them. But yeah, now we actually have a shortcut between Lavender Town and Vermilion. As you remember from a while back, this is Route 11. Which leads us right back to Vermilion if we're careful to avoid the trainers here. Damn it. <laughs> I'd, I failed my plan. Let's go, but don't cheat. What? I'll see you guys in just a second. Huh? That's not right. Uh, yes, it is. You lost. Because I'm way over-leveled by comparison to you, dude. But yeah, we made it all the way back to Vermilion. Now let's heal up real fast, because we need it. But yeah, that about does it for this episode. We've taken a look at the other four routes... Uh, next from Future City cleared out the Snorlax problem and we've opened the path to Vermilion and Lavender making it a lot easier to travel around on foot I think we've made plenty of progress plus we got the Super Rod so next time on Let's Play Pokemon Fire and Leaf Green we'll be doing something important here in Vermilion and before heading back doing some training up in uh, the routes next to Fuchsia and maybe tackling the Future City Gym till next time, ice out